I'm about to transform this completely boring photo into a legendary masterpiece and I'll show you exactly how to do it yourself in just three minutes. This is the exact same look National Geographic used for their most iconic images. I tested this technique on a hundred photos and the results were mind-blowing. Watch what happens when I apply these simple steps. Kodachrome wasn't just film, it was colour magic in a canister. When photographers talk about the film they miss the most, this is it. This tiny box changed photography forever. When shots right, you'd get these insanely vibrant yet perfectly balanced colours with this subtle vintage film that regular editing just can't match. National Geographic photographers used it for 30 years and legends like Saul Leiter, Ernst Haas and Steve McCurry, the guy who shot this Afghan girl photo that you've definitely seen, they all chose Kodak. Now here's something crazy. Kodachrome was so complex to develop that only one lab in the entire world could process it by the end. And in 2009, Kodak killed it forever. But today, I'm showing you exactly how to recreate this legendary look in Lightroom in under five minutes. So what makes Kodachrome so special? Let's break it down. First, there's the warmth like golden hour light spilling over everything. It's not just about adding yellow, it's about creating a glow that feels natural and inviting. Then there's this magical colour balance you won't find anywhere else. Instead of screaming at you, these colours whisper with authority. These blues have this milky depth, like looking into a mountain lake. The greens feel weathered and storied, like they've lived a thousand lives. And those reds? Those reds are what Kodachrome built its legacy on. They smolder rather than burn, commanding attention without begging for it. It's this controlled vibrancy that digital filters have been chasing for years, but never quite capturing. And finally, there's the grain. Fine, subtle, and full of texture. It's not noisy, it's not distracting, it's like the film's fingerprint, adding character without overwhelming the image. Now, let's head over to Lightroom to create this look. All right, let's fire up Lightroom and get started with the basic panel. This is where the magic begins. Okay, so first up, we're going to pull back the highlights to around minus 15. So just one thing, these aren't just random numbers. These are the exact ones that will help flatten the image just enough to get that film-like quality without losing any details. We set the highlights of minus 15. Let's boost the shadows up to 15. So you can see how it slightly starts to open up the darker areas of the image. When I click on this eye over here, you can see there's a subtle change. And so that is pretty much the Kodachrome balance coming right before your eyes. And so for the white tones, we're going to drop those to minus 20. This will prevent the bright areas from blowing out from your images and it will keep everything looking natural. Here's where most people get it completely wrong. We're actually going to raise the black tones to plus 20. Now this single adjustment is what will give us that magical film-like atmosphere. Look how it lifts the entire image. Push it a little bit more to plus 23. Now we're going to leave the clarity at zero. Same with texture and the haze, we're not gonna to touch these. I'm not a fan of them. For vibrance, we're going to bring that down to minus five and saturation, we're going to pull that back to around minus 10. So dropping the saturation to minus 10 may sound counterintuitive, right? But this is exactly how we get that subdued vintage color palette that makes Kodachrome look so special. So now, let's move on to the Tone Curve panel. This is where the real Kodachrome magic happens. 
It's the secret sauce that most tutorials completely miss. So now we're going to take the linear curve and we're going to create that perfect film response curve that gives Kodachrome its signature look. Now for the RGP curve, we will need exactly these points. I've tested hundreds of combinations and this is the perfect balance. So for the shadows, we are going to start off in the 20s. Around here, 23 and 28. For the mid-tones, we will be floating around the 120s. So this setting will just balance out the mid-tones. And for the highlights, we're going to use a setting around the 187 region to put a little bit of control onto the highlights. Okay, around here, 188 and 187. Now, do you see how this subtle S-curve gives the image that film-like contrast? But the real magic happens when we adjust each color channel separately. So let's move on to the red curve. For the red curve, we will add these points very low at the bottom, around 20 and 6. And again, around 63 and 43. For the mid-tones, a little higher, 119 and 131. And then at 198 and 210. Okay. Okay, so this will enhance the warm Kodachrome reds without making them look artificial. Now for the green curve. Moving on to the green curve, we will set points at 62 and 45. 62 and 45 and then at 121 and 131. And then at 198 and 212. Let's move on to the blue curve. Okay, so the blue curve, our first point will be around 59 and 45. Then at 119 and 131. Or thereabouts. Finally, we will set another point at 195 and 211. Now, let's look at the before and after. Look at that transformation. This is before and this is now. Those subtle curve adjustments are making all of the difference. Let's style in those iconic Kodachrome colors in the HSL panel. This is where your photos will start to come alive with that vintage film look. Let's start with the hue adjustments. We will increase the red by 10. Yellows are plus 10. Orange we're going to leave alone. Greens up to 10. And then aqua up to five, blue up to five, and purple up to five. And magenta we're going to leave alone under hue. For the saturation, we're going to pull the reds back 15. Orange we'll leave at zero. Same with yellow, we'll set that at zero. Greens, we're pulling back to minus 10. Aqua, we will push to 
plus 10. Blue, we're going to push to plus 20. Purple goes back to minus 10. And magenta goes back to minus 25. Now, do you see how we're creating that signature color balance? Those blues pop while the reds and greens stay more subdued. Classic Kodachrome. Now for the luminance. These adjustments are going to give our colors that perfect depth. And so we'll begin by pulling the reds back to minus five. Yellows, minus 15. <clears throat> Green, whoops, that was the wrong one. Yellows to minus 15. Greens, minus 20. Aqua minus 20 and blues minus 20. Purples will reduce that to minus 10 and magenta to minus five. Now let's look at a before and after. Now look at the difference. The colors are now perfectly balanced with that unmistakable Kodachrome feel. No film look is complete without some grain. So let's go to the effects panel and we'll set the grain amount to plus 25. Just enough to be noticeable without being distracting. We'll set the size to 35. This mimics that fine Kodachrome grain structure and the roughness we will leave at 50, giving it that authentic film texture. Friends, don't skip this step. Digital photos can sometimes look too perfect, and this grain will give your images that organic, tangible quality that makes film so special. Let's move on to the final secret weapon, the calibration panel. Most people never even open this panel, but it is essential for getting that true Kodachrome look. Let's set the shadow tint to minus 10 to get that slight green tint in the shadows. For the red primary, we will set the hue to 25. And the saturation to 20. For the green primaries, we will set that to 45. And the saturation, we will pull that back to minus 30. The hue for the blue primary will set to five. Just there. And the saturation, we will pull that back to minus 25. Nice. Finally, Set your camera profile to camera standard as a baseline. In my case, I took this photo with a Fujifilm. So I will set it to the profile that I used at the time of taking a photo, which was classic Chrome. Okay, so it does look a bit too green. I'm going to push the shadow tint in the opposite direction to plus 10. These are the adjustments that transform a good edit into a great one. This isn't just any preset. This is a time machine that transforms your modern digital photos into timeless film masterpieces. And the best part, you can save these exact settings as a preset and apply them to any photo with just one click. Let's do that now. If I move Lightroom to the right, And if we go to presets, click on create preset, and we can name it my co my co the chrome presets. Well, 64. Oops. We'll keep the basic settings, the tone curve, color mixer. We need the effects, we need the calibration. Let's click on create. And now we have the preset saved here. Let's try it on a few more photos. 
So if I click on this one and let's click on the preset, look at that. It's as though we've just gone back in time. Let's find another one. And here is a landscape shot that I took in Wesker. It doesn't look straight. So if we straighten it a little, uh, I'm just going to auto realign it. That looks cool. I'll set my color profile to classic chrome and let's apply the preset. And there you have it. I mean, look at that. Exactly what we spoke about with the subdued greens and blues. And as we said, this is a timeless film masterpiece. So now let's switch over to look at the final before and after. Let's see this Kodachrome magic in action. Here's a dull, flat photo. Nothing special, right? But watch what happens when we apply these exact settings. Look at that. The warmth, the whispered colours, the fine grain. It's like stepping back in time. This is the power of Kodachrome. And now you know exactly how to do it yourself. Now it's your turn. Whether you're editing portraits, landscapes, or street photography, this Kodachrome 64 look is a game changer. So grab your photos, start up Lightroom, and let me know in the comments which settings made the biggest difference for your images. Hit that like button if you're going to try this on your photos, and subscribe for more editing techniques. Let's keep creating something amazing.